So in some of my previous videos, I've talked you through how to make games and apps in just seven minutes, and hopefully you've seen that it can be quite easy to get something decent up and running. But there's quite a big difference between making a simple app or a game and actually understanding a whole programming language and mastering the art of coding. That's quite a bit more difficult, and unfortunately it's also particularly difficult when it comes to Android development, because with Android you need to learn Java, which is already quite a complex programming language, an object-oriented programming language with classes and methods. You need to understand XML, which is the code you use for the layout files. You need to understand the project structure, how to use the Android SDK, and yeah, it's a bit of an uphill struggle. Learning how to develop can be a daunting process for anyone starting out, and it's easy to get put off before you really get started. So in this video, I wanna share some tips that can help you to make learning any programming language Android development in particular, that little bit easier. So where do you start? First of all, it makes sense to start with a good book. I learned to program from a book, but I would say you want to approach using a book in the correct way. So find yourself a basic introduction to Java or Android development and read it. But don't read the entire thing. As you read the first few chapters, you'll hopefully be able to take some notes and understand the basics of how things work, understand things like if statements and variables, but as you get further into the book, things are gonna get a little bit more abstract and obtuse and you might find yourself starting to struggle. So what I'd say is often a good way to start is to read the first couple of chapters, make some notes, and then when you stop understanding what's being said, that's when you stop and take a break from it. And it's at that point, I think it's a good idea to start making a simple project. So that's my second tip, is to start making some kind of project really early on. Because Java or C Sharp or any other programming language, that's a massive, subject matter. You're never going to completely master any single programming language. There's always going to be new techniques, new commands that you aren't familiar with. Instead then, instead of trying to learn how to program for Android, instead of learning Java, learn how to build the thing you want to build. So come up with a simple project and just learn what you need in order to make that project. So perhaps it could be a calculator or perhaps it could be a quiz, which I've recently talked you through on this channel. And by doing this, what you're doing is you're contextualizing what you're learning. You've got an end goal in mind. You're seeing how those statements and how those principles work in practice instead of just thinking of it in an abstract, arbitrary sense. This also gives you motivation and it helps you to see how everything works together and get familiar with the tools you need to use, the IDE, etc. And it's great because at the end of it, you'll have a program, an app that you can show your friends and you can try yourself and that's quite a rewarding feeling too. So instead of just trying to understand Java, set out to make yourself a little game, a little project, and that is the key word here is little, simple. You need to make sure that, that first project isn't anything too ambitious, because a lot of people will say to me, I want to learn how to program, and I'll say, why? They say, because they want to make an app that will revolutionize the way people use their money. And I'm like, well, no offense, but that's such a huge undertaking. It involves collaboration with many other people. It's going to be cloud-based. It's just far more complicated than you should be using for your first project. So build up to that grand scheme you've got in your head, sure, but for your first project, come up with something really simple, learn to make that, and then from there, you'll find you need to learn new things. And that's when you start to make these projects more and more complicated, and then you'll learn more and more stuff. And as you go, you'll find that hopefully you pick up more and more knowledge until you get to the point where you can say, yes, I do understand Java. Tip number three is to reverse engineer, to ask questions, to approach programming in a collaborative sense, and and like I say, not to try and master the entire programming language. Don't get too disheartened if, when it comes to resizing a bitmap or something else like that, you need to look online and find a method that someone else has done and say, can I use this in my project? Because that's how a lot of programming is done. A lot of us don't actually remember every single statement we're gonna use. We just Google it like anyone else. You need to have that basic knowledge and a basic understanding of how programming languages work and how to structure the particular programming language that you're interested in. But beyond that, there's nothing wrong with borrowing code, with reverse engineering and picking things apart, with reading online, with checking how things work, with looking for better ways to do things. Always do your research. Often you'll find yourself banging your head against the wall trying to solve a problem when actually you could have solved it with just a single line of code because someone's already written a class that does that job for you. So like I say, don't be afraid to reach out and don't expect to know everything and to do it all yourself. We all need a little help from time to time. As you develop and get more advanced, you're gonna to need to find more resources to pick up more information, and it all depends on what kind of learner you are. But for me, I find the easiest way to grasp a new subject or to build a new app is to find a video online that will talk me through it, a video tutorial. And the great thing about that 
is that you'll see them using the same tool as you and you can literally follow along as they're doing whatever they're doing. You can see how they set things up. You can follow the code as they do it, any errors they make, they'll explain, they'll explain everything as they go. And so there's no way you can miss a step because it's so annoying when you try and follow something from an article or from a book, you build something and then it doesn't work and you're not sure why. Whereas with a video, you can rewind it and see exactly what they wrote, exactly what order they did it in and how they used the tool. It's very annoying when someone goes, insert this, and you're like, where's the insert button? I don't know. So that's why videos are so useful for learning to code and learning to use any tool for that matter. One more piece of advice is that when you're looking for information, either on Google or on YouTube, make sure it's up to date and relevant because Android in particular is constantly developing. Um, new techniques are always being introduced, new features. And if you find an article that was written a year and a half ago, it might be completely obsolete at this point. So when you're searching on Google, a quick tip is to go to the tools and make sure that you're searching for content that was added in the last year. And that way you know it's up to date and you won't have any issues with things being deprecated or just obsolete at this point. Also important is that as you're learning, make sure that you do the groundwork and you learn the basics and don't get too ahead of yourself. That means things like learning to use debugging tools, learning correct formatting and good practices. Whilst this might not be the most fun or exciting part of programming, it will stand you in good stead for the future. And you'll find that if you get into good habits now, it'll make life a lot easier once you start working on massive projects. And it's easier to prevent yourself getting into a bad habit than it is to fix a bad habit. Trust me, I know, my programming used to be really interesting. Debugging being particularly important, of course, because it means that if you've done something wrong, you can find out what you did wrong, rather than just staring at the code for hours and hoping that the solution will magically come to you. Which is, again, how I used to go about things. Another tip is to break things down and to learn them in a sensible order. Like I say, unfortunately, developing for Android is quite difficult because it involves lots of different components. And sometimes it's hard to know, am I learning Java at this point or am I learning to use the Android SDK? And instead of trying to learn the whole thing at once then, it can be a better idea to learn a bit at a time. And in particular, it's a good idea to learn Java first. If you're struggling to dive straight into Android development, maybe take a time out and learn how to use Java. So you can find loads of Java IDEs. These are the tools you use to program Java. A great one is BlueJ. That's completely free, you can download it, and then you can write little programs that will just print things out to the screen or um, work with numbers or ask the user questions. And by getting familiar with that, you'll then be able to see how that works in the context of Android development. So when you come to use Android Studio, you've got a little bit more familiarity with it. And it might even make sense to learn a completely different programming language altogether. As I say, Java itself is actually, unfortunately, quite a complex language to pick up. It's very strict with its syntax and its structure. If you make any small mistakes, it won't run at all. And it doesn't read, particularly like English. And it's an object-oriented programming language. So all of this makes it quite complicated to pick up for the first time, even before you add the Android stuff on top of that. So instead, you could choose to learn a simpler language to begin with, just to familiarize yourself with some of the basic concepts of coding. So I learned BASIC first, and this is a much easier programming language. It reads a lot more like English with big if-then statements and go to 10. Um, Python's another very good one for beginners. And C Sharp looks a lot like Java, has only a few differences, but I find it personally a little bit easier to pick up. Of course, Android Studio now also supports development with Kotlin, which is basically a slightly easier and more beginner-friendly version of Java, so that's another option. This is the book I learned to program from, by the way. It's programming in Quick Basic. Quick Basic being a version of Basic that used to come packaged with DOS and old Windows laptops. It's been well loved like an old teddy bear with no cover, coffee stains, water stains. It couldn't look more ancient, but it's thanks to this book that I'm here today, so there you go. And of course, if you're really stuck with Android Studio and Java, then you could just make the leap to a completely different IDE. That's an integrated development environment. So that means that you're using a different tool to build your apps. And some of these let you use different programming languages. So for instance, Unity development is useful for making games and that lets you use C Sharp. And some people find that much easier. B4A or Basic for Android is a tool that lets you make Android apps using Basic. There's Xamarin, there's tons of options out there. And there's even game makers and app builders that will allow you to make tools and apps with very limited coding knowledge. And the best of these are the ones that involve a little bit of coding understanding, because that way you can then translate that idea and build on it to eventually make the leap to using the official tools from Google. So everyone learns differently, and of course you've probably got your own ideas of what can make learning to code easier. If you do, then please share them in the comments down below, and I'm sure other people would like to read them. I hope that some of these tips have been helpful for you, 
And if they have, then please consider liking this video, share it around, uh, subscribe to the channel for more like this, and of course, check out androidauthority.com for we are your source for all things Android.